A new investigation into fast fashion brand Shein has found that its factory workers supplying its garments are paid as little as 4 cents while working shifts around 18 hours. While you thought that's the worst part, nah, there's more to it guys. Yes, and that's exactly what we will be discussing today. Shein launches around 3 to 4 thousand new female apparel products every day. So how do they do it? How do they manage to launch such thousands of apparel every other day just like that? To know all about it, tag along till the end of the video. To begin with, Shein is a Chinese online fast fashion retailer, which was originally named ZZKKO. It was founded in 2008 by entrepreneur and search engine optimization marketing specialist Chris Zhu. In its early stages, Shein was considered more of a dropshipping business than a retailer, which sold items directly to international customers through third-party wholesalers. Initially, it wasn't involved in clothing design and manufacturing and instead obtained its products from the wholesale clothing market in Guangzhou, which is a central hub to many of China's garment manufacturers and markets. It was not until 2014 that Xi'an began to acquire its own supply chain system, transforming itself into a fully integrated retailer. The company has established its supply chain in Guangzhou with a network of more than 3,000 suppliers. Based in China and shipping across 220 countries, Xi'an is the world's largest fashion retailer as of 2022. The company is valued at $100 billion, as per the latest news after a funding round in April 2022. So, in the beginning, Xi'an made their products available in Spain, France, Russia, Italy, and Germany in the early 2010s, as well as selling cosmetics, shoes, purses, and jewelry in addition to women's clothing. In 2012, the company established its current website and began using social media marketing by collaborating with fashion bloggers for giveaways and advertising items on Facebook. Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. In 2014, Xi'an acquired Romway, a Chinese e-commerce retailer, making it a fully integrated retailer. By 2016, the company had 100 employees and had already established their headquarters in Guangzhou, China. By 2016, Zhu gathered a team of 800 designers and prototype makers that manufactured Xi'an-branded clothing. The company began improving its supply chain, excluding vendors that provided low-quality items or photos. By 2019, its merchandise was featured on daytime television shows in the United States with other internet businesses such as Fashion Nova and Zoffel. Meanwhile, fashion influencers also displayed Shein products in haul videos alongside other well-known retailers. Despite being an online retail store, Shein also opened pop-up shops for people who do not wish to purchase online. Moreover, the retailer's early usage of TikTok and the ability to advertise viral items boosted Shein's popularity. And by November 2021, Shein grew from a company valued at $15 billion to one valued at $30 billion. During the pandemic of 2020, it reportedly made $10 billion in revenue, making it the seventh straight year of more than 100% sales growth for the company. As of October 2020, Shein became the world's largest online-only fashion firm and it still maintains that spot by May 2022. It came to be known as the largest fast fashion firm. Okay, now looking from the surface, it looks very fair and ethical. But peeping behind the screen will give you an insight into the dark side of Xi'an. How they actually soared their way up, and in fact how they're still trying to maintain the same sitting on top of the world very comfortably at a hundred billion dollar company value. Right, let's take a look at the unpopular side of it. There are many unanswered question marks floating around Xi'an. For instance, while its site says that it believes that people deserve a living wage, it importantly doesn't say it pays a living wage. The story is similar to one of the most asked questions about Xi'an. Does it use child or forced labor? Again, its website says it never engaged in child or forced labor, but Xi'an has not provided a single shred of evidence to support that claim. Well, we have some shocking undercover reports released by Channel 4. Did you know that weekends don't exist for tech textile workers in Xi'an's factories and only get one day off a month? In the 47-minute program, which streamed on the UK television channel, workers at the factory can be heard talking about the lackluster conditions, with one stating, there's no such thing as Sundays here. Working days start at 8 a.m., but regularly last until the night. Those who make mistakes are paid only a third of the already meager wages. A new investigation by the UK broadcaster Channel 4 has uncovered details about the business practices of the Chinese fast 
Chinese fashion company. The outlet sent an undercover worker to film inside two factories in Guangzhou that supply clothes to the fast fashion giant. In one factory, Channel 4 found that workers receive a base salary of 4,000 yuan per month, roughly $556, to make 500 pieces of clothing per day and that their first month's pay is withheld from them. In another factory, workers received the equivalent of 4 cents per item. Workers in both factories were working up to 18-hour days and were given only one day off a month. Workshops with blocked corridors and stairways were also discovered. In one factory, the outlet found women washing their hair during lunch breaks, and workers have penalized two-thirds of their daily wage if they made a mistake on a clothing item. The reported hours and working conditions violate China's labor laws. Xi'an did not immediately respond to the cut's request, but a spokesperson for the company said in a statement to City AM, We are extremely concerned by the claims presented by Channel 4, which would violate the code of conduct agreed to by every Xi'an supplier. Any non-compliance with this code is dealt with swiftly, and we will terminate partnerships that don't meet our standards. We have requested specific information from Channel 4 so that we can investigate. Okay, now this is not the first time response. This is what they have always been quoted saying when Xi'an was accused of illegal labor practices in previous years. In another report, we find from tech reporter Louise Matsikis and China reporter Megan Tobin, who spent six months charting the rise of Xi'an for the journalist non-profit Rest of the World, they tell Hannah Moore that the company has been plagued by accusations of poor labor and environmental practices. In addition, designers such as Nixie Killick, whose psychedelic dresses and leggings have been worn by Lady Gaga, Sia, and others, say Sheehan has copied their work without permission. In 2018, the company was sued by Levi Strauss & Co. for copying a trademarked jean stitching. Sheehan has also been accused by dozens of other brands, artists, and small fashion retailers as well as stealing designs. To name some, in 2021, Airwear International Limited, who are known for the Doc Martin boots, in a lawsuit, accused Xi'an and its sister company Romway of selling copies of their designs at a cheaper price, while using photos of authentic Doc Martin shoes to entice customers, to which Xi'an responded with a blanket denial of Airwear International's claims. In another case, we have Quinn Jones, who's the co-founder of Kike, an earring brand in Los Angeles, said that he found earring designs on Xi'an that were very similar to Kike's earrings. Xi'an removed the products and pledged to drop the supplier that produced the copied item. Reclamer PH, Sincerely RIA, and LA-based brand Valfre, owned by Ilse Valfre, are among the other brands from whom Xi'an apparently made a duplication. The good news is that some good Samaritan people came forward in an effort to bring awareness to Xi'an's actions and to help support indie brands and artists. Then the hashtag Boycott Xi'an became popular on TikTok and Twitter in 2020. Not just all that, but Xi'an has also entangled in careless health and safety concerns. It was cited in a marketplace investigation overseen by Professor Miriam Diamond at the University of Toronto for selling toddlers jackets that contained almost 20 times the amount of lead permitted under Health Canada's safety regulations. The company has also sold a red purse that exceeded permitted lead levels five times the amount. Well, there's no middle ground when it comes to Xi'an. You either love Xi'an for its chick looks and dirt cheap prices, or you hate Xi'an for, well, everything else. With all the bad headlines, why is Xi'an still so popular? Undoubtedly, it's affordability, fashionable styles, and target the right segment of people. In times of inflation and loss of purchasing power, in addition to a clever marketing influence, Xi'an has proven that it's unlike any other fashion shopping platform out there, and its growth speaks for itself. For the past seven years, it has grown over 100% year on year, and it has very well captured the wallets of young shoppers. Xi'an feeds the worst side of ourselves. So there you go, that's how Xi'an is reigning, adopting exploitation, and a lot of other malpractices. What do you think of it? Are you a Xi'an fan? Drop your thoughts in the comments.